do you smell what the shock is flipping? Welcome to another installment of Mr. Shuck's Flip ELA. Today we will be taking a look at the introduction to a short story entitled The Naming of Names by Ray Bradbury. The story starts on page 152 in your textbook. First thing we are going to do is a quick little journal entry based on the Make the Connection section in the textbook. So if you have your book, turn to page 152. If you do not, just listen for a moment. From Walla Walla to Winnemuckama, from Mooseheart to King of Prussia, from Devil's Hopyard to St. Cloud, every part of our country has wonderful names that give us clues to the identity and background of the people who have lived there. With a group of classmates, look over a map of your community, region, or state, and pick out and list some unusual names. This will be our first step to the journal entry. We will make a list of strange or unusual names that we find within our own community, somewhere within Schuylkill County. Schuylkill County. Try to focus on names of roads, rivers, towns, buildings, etc. Once you have a list of five or six strange sounding names, we will take five minutes of writing time to write about a time or to, to uh, imagine if you were the, the first settler within your community. What would you name your community and why would you name it the way you named it? So again, we will take five minutes to work on this writing. Begin now. Now that we have our journals completed, we are going to add some details about setting. Okay, if you remember, setting is where and when a story takes place. It is the time and the place of a story. Now, when we talk about settings, we can start off very broad with a setting, and usually we can narrow it down or funnel it down and get more specific. Sometimes a setting can actually drive the plot of the story. In other words, the story might really be significant to the setting or the setting can be insignificant to the plot. In other words, the plot of the story doesn't really matter as con concerned with the setting. A new academic word to add, simile. A simile is a comparison of two unlike things that uses the words like or as. Examples, she has eyes like the sea or her hair is as soft as silk. We are making comparisons of two things that are different using the words like or as. A metaphor is another comparison. This time with a metaphor, we compare two unlike things without using the words like or as. Metaphors are oftentimes a little bit more difficult and harder to pick out. Some examples would be a blanket of snow is a pretty good example of a metaphor. We are comparing a blanket with snow or the classroom was a zoo. The classroom wasn't literally a zoo, but it is being compared to a zoo. The last academic word that we are going to add for this particular story is science fiction. Science fiction is fiction that is based on science or technology. Oftentimes, science fiction is futuristic in nature. As we move right along, um, we are going to turn to page 157 in the textbook and look at the literature and science section. I would like you guys to take a few notes um, based off of this section about the planet of Mars. It's got a lot to do with the setting for our particular story. Mars is called the red planet because its surface is covered with red dust. The strong Martian winds create huge dust storms. Depending on how much dust is in the air, the Martian sky ranges from pink on a clear day to purple on a stormy one. People associate the color red with fury. This may be why Mars was named after the Roman god of war. About the naming of names, Bradbury says, I charted my own Mars and went through a naming of names, building cities and towns and creating a wild and special new world. In fact, the real Mars is so cold and has so little oxygen and water that humans could not survive there without special equipment. Its atmosphere consists mainly of carbon dioxide, 
and the average temperature near the planet's surface is an icy negative 80 degrees Fahrenheit. In the 19th century, astronomers noticed what looked like canals on the surface of Mars. They wondered if intelligent beings had dug these trenches. Scientists now know that the canals are actually the outlines of large craters. Still, evidence from a recently discovered 4.5 billion year old meteorite suggests that life in the form of tiny single-celled organisms may have existed on Mars billions of years ago. Mars continues to fascinate scientists. In 1996, NASA sent two spacecraft to Mars. The first, the Mars Pathfinder, landed on Mars on July 4th, 1997. The second, the Mars Global Surveyor, reached Mars orbit about two months later. Future missions will study the climate, terrain, and water conditions. Scientists are planning for the next step in the exploration of the planet. As early as 2020, humans may be landing on Mars. Not too sure about that one, that's only about two and a half years away. I don't think we will be landing on Mars anytime soon. In your Talking to the Text Paper guys, I would like you to turn to the Fact and Opinion section. And in the Facts section, I want you to label it Mars. We're going to write down some facts that we know about the planet Mars. You can take a few from the Literature and Science section and a few from the PowerPoint that you see here. First of all, Mars is the fourth planet from the Sun. We know that it is cold, negative 80 degrees Fahrenheit far too cold for human beings to survive. We know that there is very little oxygen on the planet Mars. We would need oxygen masks in order to breathe there. And we obviously know that people cannot survive on this planet. And it is red in color, as it said in the literature and science section, oftentimes from the red dust that gets blown around in the atmosphere of Mars. So this is what we know about the planet Mars. As we read the story, we're going to look at Ray Bradbury's version of Mars, and we will take some notes in the fact and opinion section about how Ray Bradbury's version of Mars is different from our actual version of Mars. Remember that this story is a story in the science fiction genre, so our author, Ray Bradbury, is able to kind of create the setting any way that he wants to. So his version of Mars is very different from ours. If you flip back to page 152 in the Elements of Literature section, you won't recognize Mars in this science fiction story. The story's imaginary and fantastic setting springs from the imagination of Ray Bradbury. On his Mars, 21st century colonists from Earth settle in a place where the wind roars through the violet grass, shaking out green rose petals. As you'll see in this strange Martian setting, everything is subject to a kind of magic. 